going? All right, welcome to a Cardinal House AMA. I'm glad to have Spritz here on. We got Chris. I know we have DLG um, as well here, but it's going to be a very important one, I think, for a lot of the users here that are still in crypto. They're still going to be using crypto as we, we get into some of these uh, real world ways to offer into your crypto. So, um, welcome, welcome. Thanks. I'm excited to be here. I just, uh, as we were talking before, uh... We hit record. Uh, I just landed in East Denver, getting situated, and yeah, it's a it's a great atmosphere here and a great atmosphere here in the chat. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I'm looking forward to chatting a little bit more about things spritz related, but I also we start things off a little bit differently, more so to just get to know you a little bit better versus just the product that you guys are pushing. I think that's really big. You can tell a lot about a team versus you know based on how yeah. they are, what their thoughts are. Um, but first, just something a little bit interesting of a question that I like to ask people. Um, if you're good, we'll go through like a couple of just rapid fire and then you can give your opinions and that kind of thing. Yeah, sure. Let's do it. Awesome. Awesome. So first question I got, when do you think the next bull run is going to be? Well, uh, we'll only know we're in the bull run until it's happening, but, <laughs> um, I don't know. I might go out, go so far out on a limb to say that we might be kind of in a consolidation sort of beginning phases here. It just feels like, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't say the lows are in, but uh, necessarily guarantee that, but it does feel like uh, there's a hell of a lot of reasons to be bullish and, you know, not as many reasons to be uh, increasingly bearish nowadays, right? So uh, I, I'm hoping we're kind of at the beginning of a, a wonderful 2023. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be interesting. And I like the point you made, we're not going to admit it's a bull run until we're like near the top. Right. And then that's when yeah, of people start saying, Oh, we're in a bull run. And then it crashes. <laughs> it's funny yes, how that so all we works. Want, we want a good amount of tension and uneasiness is a healthy thing in the market uh, and <laughs> uncertainty. And that means that that's how, you know, it's healthy. Yeah, for sure. For sure. If it leans too way or too far one-sided or if it leans too far to one side, uh, that's where things get a little bit sketchy. Um, but yeah, definitely, definitely agree with you there. Um, next question, something that I'd like to ask every single person we bring on. Do you think in 10 years down the line, do you think that NFTs or tokens will be more popular? Oh, very interesting. I mean, my first thought, to be honest, is like kind of, aren't they the same thing? Um, in some ways, right? Aside they're from that far, point, aside from that point. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, I think there's a sentiment to that where there's, I think that you're going to see more of a spectrum, right? Where they're blurring together, right? So I think the either or. You know, I almost might disagree with the premise and say we're going to find some really great ways to break up NFTs and trade them and, you know, group them together and package them up and split them apart, you know, and, and put tokens inside NFTs and vice versa. So I think they're just going to be tools that ultimately are the building blocks, maybe even for something new that is like a, you know, a, a mega token type that is going to be what everybody's using in 10 years. The mega token. I like it. <laughs> it's a new thought. Yours. It's a new thought. Yeah, I haven't I haven't heard about that. So putting token like essentially merging the, the best of both. I mean obviously NFTs have yeah. their, their benefits and um that's an interesting thought. Interesting thought there. Um yeah, so next next up, why don't we dive a little bit deeper? Um less so on a couple of these questions, but more into you specifically, your background you know, who you are, how you got here, all that kind of stuff before we touch on spritz, just more so, you know, who you are coming into, into this, uh, this business. Yeah, sure. I've, I've always been obsessed kind of with the intersection of, uh, of, of computers and money, uh, for better, or for worse. <laughs> um, so, you know, even before, you know, in college, I studied exactly that computer science and finance. I spent a while in, uh, at wall in wall street, Kind of writing code to to trade stocks, um, but even before that, um, you know, I had these kind of little businesses uh, growing up um, around insurance and lotteries and so forth. So I really love um, financial products, um, and I especially love when finance can be used as a tool to improve the lives of everyday people. Right? It's not just a tool for 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 people to kind of trade and get rich, right? Or for Wall Streeters, mm -hmm. it's a tool that hopefully like each and every one of us, like your mom and dad, can uh, can think of as a good thing, right? It's kind of a personal mission, right? Finance is a good thing 
Um, so yeah, I mean, for me, throughout my career, um, that's really been a, a through line. And you know, my former company was an insurance company for small farmers in emerging markets, um, insuring them against weather events like droughts and uh, storms and things like that. And um, you know, so we'll get into spritz, but you know, DeFi in the world of blockchain is you know tailor made maybe for someone like me, right? It's like literally. <laughs> Code and money are the same things. Uh, you know, it's it's a language that has money built into it. Um, so, you know, I think w when I was um, wrapping up my former company, which had nothing to do with blockchain, although we did kind of play with it a little bit, um, you know, I knew that I had to do something uh, in this space. So here we are. Gotcha, gotcha. Good stuff. I love that it's been a lifelong pass passion to to find those pieces. It's not something that just kind of you know, you take advantage of this opportunity. Obviously, you've taken advantage of this opportunity, but it's it's yeah. been more of a you know passion project as well. So I, I do I do really like that piece. I think too few people are passionate about the crafts that they're entering, and that definitely has a has it takes a hit on the long term sustainability there. Yeah, you're totally right. Um, you know, and, and as a founder, you know, I've done a couple of companies, and you know. <clears throat> You can get excited about an idea pretty easily, right? If you're mm -hmm. innovative, creative, oh, wow, this would be a cool product or company. Mm -hmm. But, man, in year three, <laughs> you know, when things are getting challenging, you know, when you've got to cut back, when you've got to, you know, pivot, when you've got to talk to the, you know, 300th investor, <laughs> you know, you better have some fundamental reasons why you're building what you are because the macro backdrop, right? Just look at crypto bull market, bear market, that macro backdrop is going to come and go, but you're going to be there as the founder. And so, yeah, really important to to have that that mission in some way. Yeah, for sure. For sure. That's definitely, I think that, like you said, like, I mean, like you're saying, like, it is just such an underrated piece that people, you know, I mean, you hear a lot of people saying, like, don't do what you're passionate in. Um, do whatever, you know, like, sacrifice that. You can do that as a hobby, but instead just, get good at something that you're not but in reality I, I think it's a lot tougher to do that it's easier said than done <laughs> especially yep. over the long long term but yeah really good stuff so you kind of touched a little bit on your background as far as some of the businesses that you've started before like do you want to enlighten us a little bit on what some of those have been yeah well i mentioned you know the big one was the uh the insure tech which was really cool and um you know, we use something called uh, parametric insurance, um, which just very briefly, it means that, you know, instead of, you know, let's say a, a, a hurricane comes and knocks down your house, instead of waiting for the insurance company to say, yeah, your house is worth this much money, here's a check, which takes a while, mm -hmm. you can say ahead of time, hey, if a hurricane of, you know, this category four uh, strikes within, you know, 50 miles of my house, then just pay me $100,000. And that's instant, it's objective, it's measurable. So, yeah. you know, I almost wish I was, you know, kind of could bring that company forward or myself backwards because you think about blockchain where it is today, <laughs> smart contracts, yeah. right? It's like crying out for that use case. But really it was too kind of nascent. Um, you know, this is 2015 really where it was, you know, it would have been kind of a moonshot to, to build on chain at that time. Yeah, for sure. Bitcoin DeFi. Bitcoin DeFi. Yeah. <laughs> We're still hoping. Yeah. 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 Uh, for sure. No, that's that's very cool. And I, I like the the connection too. How how well it would have fit in with blockchain. So what was the first what was the first experience you had with blockchain tech? And how'd you kind of bridge that into uh spritz and what you're building now? Yeah, I have to say there was kind of like two, I mean, I think a lot of people in, in DeFi today or DGENs even have, you know, stories where, you know, very few people are lucky enough to, or maybe smart enough to have been in it continuously, you know, since <laughs> Satoshi basically, right? Yeah. Um, so, you know, I do remember in my trading days, uh, you know, as a prop trader for um, uh, for Deutsche Bank and part of like a semi like secretive team there, you know, we all felt that the, we were you know doing something special like in the <laughs> you know the in, in the back rooms trading but you know <laughs> we had you know coinbase existed and you yeah. know B bitcoin and then you know eventually ethereum litecoin 
were on the platform. And so, you know, me and some of the other traders, we were we were trading small amounts of, of Bitcoin and kind of learning about it, reading the white paper. And, uh, you know, I remember when it was, you know, it was like four dollars up to seven dollars, you know, back, back up to twelve dollars, back to four dollars, you know. And, you know, you talk about the swings today, but you talk about losing like 90 percent, you know, in a week and then it's back three X, you know, stomach churning. Right? Yeah. You're not putting your, your net worth into that. So it was, you know, even as it is today, right, the speculative aspect is an important piece of drawing people in. Um, and then, of course, I went off and, you know, did the, you know, one of the companies I mentioned, uh, we did, you know, Y Combinator. Raised, you know, I was mm. traveling around Africa doing this other company, and so I was not. I, I was curious about and kind of, you know, understanding what smart contracts were and Ethereum, and understanding could I apply this to the insurance yeah. startup. Um, there was a couple projects. One was called Ether Risk. They're actually still around. Um, uh, it was almost like a favorite, um, sort of a favorite like catchphrase or something of Vitalik. He would get on stage and say, "Well, one of the applications of smart contracts is." An insurance for farmers. He literally would say that, but there really was, it wasn't actually happening, right? It was a bit of a fantasy, but it sounds great. Um, and, and we didn't make it happen either, you know, unfortunately, but I was sort of in the mix. And then, you know, <laughs> incidentally or not, my co-founder at that business, um, his name is Shalang Tang uh, and, and a great friend from, from MIT, from undergrad. And he had the opportunity a few years in, uh, again, of founding that insurance business to then join Ledger Prime, which is, you know, one of the preeminent um, digital asset firms, uh, unfortunately was acquired by FTX and then, which was a great thing at first and now a terrible thing. But, yeah. you know, he's a really just uh, sort of a pioneer in, um, you know, in trading and in venture investing and, and just digital asset uh, uh, trading in, um, in crypto. And so he... Really, when I was wrapping up the former company, drew me back in, and you know, he was, you know, he was sending me stuff on, you know, um, you know, Polkadot, right, and Kusama, and you know, the Graph, and you know, Engine, and you know, Audius, right, and all these projects. This is like a, you know, a year or two, three years ago, and I was also buying these tokens and seeing what was up and experiencing that wave in, in DeFi summer. And then I said, look, when I do something new, and I told you guys about my mission, personal mission, it's got to be something in deep. Like, I can't not do a company and and have it, you know, not be a, a blockchain-related one. But I don't want to just do, like, a, a kind of a copycat trading or hedge fund type company. I want to do something for, like, everyday people. And so, yeah, I mean, long story short, that led me to to Spritz and, and solving a problem that, you know, I myself was having and that I found mm -hmm. actually, you know. I think millions of people uh, who are Web3 users are having. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. And you guys are, are certainly addressing the problems of the common people. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, 100%. I think that there's a lot of application. Why don't we take this time now to dive into spritz? Like, I love the background piece. It seems like you've taken like a huge shift in like what you what your purpose is, is now to help you know, everybody have these opportunities to benefit from and that kind of thing. So I think that's phenomenal. Um, but why don't we dive a little bit into Spritz now, if that sounds good with you? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I mean, in a word, um, Spritz is the place for you to pay your bills with crypto. Um, so you can take your, your self-custody wallets, um, you know, your crypto, connect it to our DAP, um, add your bills, your mortgage, credit card, anything in real life where you want to make use of crypto, um, even your bank accounts, even making bank payments to others. And Spritz will gladly uh, accept uh, your tokens. Uh, we support six different networks, virtually any token on the six different networks. Um, and you can make with one click, one transaction, you can make a payment from $10 to $10,000 to any of those uh, bills. And, you know, some of them are instant. Some of them take a couple of days. Out the other end comes a bill payment. No bank uh, in between. No exchange in between. You know, no mistakes. No, no futzing around with uh, you know five transactions to off ramp. Just a single transaction, and uh, and and that's Spritz. So it's app app dot spritz dot finance, and you can uh, sign up today. Yeah, yeah, awesome stuff. Um, let's dive. A little bit even even go a little bit more in depth i know i there are a couple of pieces i want to touch on like the referral program i want to make sure everyone's aware of that 
um, yeah. unless something's changed in the past couple of days. But um, before we get into that, what is the what is the biggest? Uh, I know you guys offer it to uh, to pay bills and things. Are there any kind of restrictions? So what are the what are the restrictions around? You know where you can actually offer it money. Are there any? Mm-hmm. Are, there, are there any that you're trying to expand to, um, and that kind of thing? Yeah, I wouldn't say there are restrictions per se. If you're mm-hmm. on the platform, then you know we we want you to be able to do what you want to do. Um, that said, we are you know we had to start somewhere, so we're starting with for U.S. residents. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know you could be living abroad, or you could be I don't know you're on a green card or something in the U.S. But um, but you've got to have a U.S. address. That's kind of the only requirement. And mm-hmm. then most of the bills we actually support over five thousand different bills are U.S. relevant bills. So your local water provider, your utility, your electricity, your phone bill, your Apple card, your uh, Amazon credit card, your Rocket mortgage, your Bank of America mortgage, all of those bills in the U.S. um, And same with banks too, right? So you can off-ramp instantly in most cases directly from your self-custody wallet to pretty much every single bank in the United States. And most of them are instant. Some of them are a little slower if they're kind of a secondary uh, bank. So yeah, no restrictions per se, but yeah, if you're in the UK or Australia or or Canada, actually Canada's coming soon, um, you're gonna have to wait a little bit uh, for Spritz to to launch in those areas. Awesome, awesome, phenomenal. Um, And kind of branching off of that, so there aren't restrictions. Are there any limits as far as money? I know things like payment, I mean, you have things like Venmo that now require you to claim, you know, anything of, I think it's what, $600. Mm-hmm. Um, or is there anything like that, you know, that you guys are, are interacting with or are you guys just trusting people to, you know, report on their own and figure, you know, figure all that stuff out? Yeah. I mean, today the restrictions are fairly uh, wide. So the limits are mm-hmm. fairly wide. So I think it's actually $20,000. Uh, in a transaction or in a day, and there's maybe mm-hmm. like a hundred k limit or something like that. You know, most of the people that are using spritz are individuals, so some of them are you know close to those limits. But you know, yeah. the majority of people are paying. You know, maybe it's five hundred dollars, maybe it's five thousand um, dollars. And of course, if there are small business, you know, a lot of people on the platform are running small businesses, or yeah. maybe they're you know incorporated themselves right as a small business, and so those. Those folks do higher limits, and we're always happy to have a conversation. And then, you know, mm-hmm. again, as long as we know, you know, know your customer, and it's a very lightweight process, uh, then we're comfortable allowing you to use the platform. Uh, I think that's a really, really cool application as well. Web three businesses that are, you know, have way yeah. or need a way to off ramp their funds from their wallet, and that's that's another you know application that you might not think as much about because that's not your primary goal, but. I definitely could see the use there. It's not the easiest all the time to get the Coinbase Prime, you know, business account. Um, no, to yeah. do all that stuff. Not but yeah, really cool <laughs> stuff. Yeah, exactly. And we've got yeah. I mean, we have a range of. Um, I think, frankly, even at the institutional, like larger startup business level, there mm-hmm. are we're still getting a ton of requests for, you know, hey, our, you know, <laughs> Binance account is taking, uh, you know, four months and the Coinbase <laughs> Prime, like you said, is like stuck in, you know, black hole somewhere. Yeah. We just, we just did a raise, you know, we need to get, we need to pay our, our WeWork bill or something, right? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. So are you guys focused more on directly integrating with these bill payment systems or is it more focused on the you know wallet to bank it what's the what's the avenue because from my understanding it was the bill but i'm not 100 percent sure i just wanted to check it. yeah i mean you can think of us as a, a connector of sorts I, I don't know if i want to use the word bridge because that's you know loaded in in crypto but um <laughs> mm-hmm. you know we have there's kind of two sides to the spritz platform the first side is the smart contract and wallet side where you can connect you know virtually any wallet certainly mm-hmm. coinbase or metamask directly or use Wallet Connect for the other ones. We've got smart contracts deployed on all six uh, networks, so you can, you know, everything's a little bit different, but we're, you know, you're interacting with and doing a blockchain transaction. We're actually even rolling out an, an automated, um, what we're calling smart pay, so it's where you can actually kind of pre-approve transactions, and just like when you do from your bank, you know, the credit card bill comes out every month, you can do that at Spritz. So there's a whole kind of world, you know, we like to think of ourselves as, 
uh, sort of the next generation um, kind of off ramp provider um, mm -hmm. where we're, we're quite DeFi and Web3 native, and that's setting us up, up well to eventually integrate directly with protocols and dApps and projects at the blockchain level. So that's that half of our platform is super, super important. Um, and then the other half is, as you said, is the bill side, is the bank side. And, you know, we've got integration partners that get us access to, you know, hundreds or thousands of bills at a time. So you could think of Spritz as a project, as a company, as going out and building those relationships and that connectivity. And ultimately, when we launch in Canada or we launch in, you know, Mexico or somewhere else, we're going to be using, mm -hmm. in most cases, aggregators and local institutions that are going to allow you to pay those local, whatever it is, utility bills uh, or phone gotcha. bills. But, you know, the end goal is to be able to, Anything coming out of your bank account today, we want you to be able to use Spritz for and ultimately go completely bankless. Um, and there's really no need to have a to have a checking account anymore. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, that that is going to be a huge, and I'm sure you already know this. But it's a huge, you know, piece to tackle. But the convenience piece is something that is mm -hmm. so needed in this space. The the not so seamless nature just is it plays a huge role on, you know, the adoption and where things are. Oh, yeah. I'm excited for, for the next run though. Like I said, I think there's a lot of infrastructure being built like your own that is going to make onboarding just so simple. Um, yep. Yeah. Really, really cool stuff. By the way, guys, if you are in the audience, go ahead, drop some questions in the AMA questions. Um, is there something you want to touch up on before I get to the referral questions I have? Um, no, yeah, so we can talk about some of the, you know, financial, you know, sign-up bonuses uh, yeah. and everything we have. I would say also on the roadmap, um, yeah, just the automated payments is coming. Um, Canada is coming talk about soon. That. Yeah, sure. Uh, which both. <laughs> um, well, and then and then the third maybe, which is super exciting, is actually the card. Um, so we have a lot of oh. people who are at, <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> A lot of people have been asking us for the Spritz card, yeah. you know, and saying, you know, I I, I want to, you know, originally Spritz, you know, my 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 um, mission was kind of like, you know, keep the crypto, the tokens you've already got. I don't want to force you to deposit or do something new. Keep the bills you've got, right? Everybody was, uh, or sort of the cards you've got, right? Everybody was, mm -hmm. you know, give me the BlockFi card, the Gemini card, you know, all of this, <laughs> which now is, you know, sort of. Uh, yeah. Gone by the wayside, right? But it's like, yet, do people really need another card? You know, I don't think so. But they like their whatever, I don't know, Delta Sky Miles or their Amex card or something, right? So let's just connect it. So that's where Spritz was born. But yeah, we did get a lot of requests from people, and they said, you know, I'd I'd rather just actually move some of my spending to like a dedicated crypto card, and think about you know a bucket of crypto I've got on chain or maybe that I'm earning. And then matching that directly to whatever the the Amazon shopping I'm doing, you know, or whatever my Netflix bill or and stuff like that. So the card, it's not for everybody, but we've had huge demand for it. So we are very very close to releasing the card. It's actually in beta. We've got some beta testers uh, at Spritz who've been with us for a while who are who are testing it out. So you'll be able to actually directly, um, you know, add to the card instantaneously get spending power. Um, from your from your crypto on chain, um, and that's coming soon. It's going to launch, I think, on Polygon actually, but then we'll expand it to the other chains uh, rather quickly. Interesting. So, is it a debit card? Yeah, so it's a debit card. Gotcha. Um, yeah, you'll you'll charge it up um, and add spending power. That's just the first step. You know, the second step mm -hmm. for us is to say, hey, I want to maintain a balance uh on this card and when it gets below a certain amount i want you to you know here's you can sign with the smart contract you know i yeah. want you to transfer over some usdc or you know eventually unstake from this pool right or you know sell a little bit of uh wrapped eth and put that on the card as well and then you know send me a notification that you've done it right so you're kind of just mm -hmm. the whole thing with spritz is just in time crypto movement so you're moving your crypto just at the last second in order to kind of fund your real life you're not just <laughs> letting it sit there yeah you know just fallow right you want to be you want to be staking your eth right you want to be um in a, in a liquidity pool right you want to be lending out maybe your uscc or something like that and earning you gotcha gotcha super super interesting stuff yeah that card i could see having a lot of application so you guys have any questions on that? Feel free to ask. But let's touch on. You said that Canada is coming. 
soon. Do you know when? Are there yep. any dates that are official yet? Yeah, well, end of this quarter is what we're okay. targeting for launch. So, you know, another month. And uh, we are going to launch with the off-ramp first. Um, you know, about, about half of our usage is bills, mm-hmm. credit cards, mortgages. Another half is just a straight-up off-ramp. So a lot of people just like the easy kind of one click to their bank yeah. and that's what we're going to be launching in canada um very very soon canada it's kind of our you know most requested country <laughs> i would say so you know really representing from up north and you know we hear you and uh we're, we're building it awesome awesome um is there are there any plans to do any kind of on-ramp i'm, I'm not familiar if you guys have any plans or if you're partnering with anyone to do something like that yeah, it's not currently on the like, scheduled on the roadmap at least mm-hmm. for Q1 or Q2, um, but it is very, very much in demand um, mm-hmm. from people. So, you know, I think to be honest, right, I sort of looked at the market and said, well, there are a lot of off- on ramps out there, right? I mean, yeah, <laughs> you know, now, now in MetaMask, you can on ramp directly. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, they, they use Sardine. Uh, but of course they kind of rip your face off, right? It's like, I I tried to do it (laughs) and I think I I said, give me a hundred dollars in USDC on Polygon. It worked. Like I had first, I mean, however, I had to do like this KYC process that was really awful. You know, 10 minutes later, there was a hundred dollars there minus $5, you know, for the fee. And I was just (laughs) like, you know, um, like, (laughs) And, and yeah. putting aside, right, ph- philosophically, how are we going to onboard sort of the, you know, I talk about the everyman, right? How are we going to yeah. onboard the, the everyman who's just tipping their toes in with $10, $100, you know, the people who care about two cents in gas, right? For, mm-hmm. And that's why they're on Polygon. And you're going to charge them $5 to move a stable coin. You know, you're, you're, you're preventing them from kind of, you know, building wealth and building on-chain wealth yeah. uh, right away. So... I started to hear the feedback from users and then also from other projects about how the fee structure, KYC process, mm-hmm. even just working with these companies that are like borderline monopolies, MoonPay, Transact, yeah. Wire, that are very centralized, that there are is actually a demand for other solutions. And then, you know, now that we've built, Spritz has built a really great offering focused on the off-ramp. You know, I think pairing that with an on-ramp would be a nice way to kind of close the loop, right, for a lot of users mm-hmm. where they can have some income coming in and being on-chain and then the expenses going out. So long way of saying it's not on the roadmap, but it's really yeah. at, the, at the kind of front of my brain and I think makes a lot of sense. And so I think pretty soon you'll see us, um, you know, maybe maybe make some more public announcements about our, our plans there. But, uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, so you don't, don't hold your breath um, for free Q1, uh, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, Q1, you got 30 days. <laughs> not well, sure. not well, a crazy amount of time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, that's super, super cool stuff, though. It's almost <laughs> like you guys are trying to make, you know, bring Robinhood to Web3. in a like, in, mm-hmm. as far as, like, the audience that Robinhood was really trying to capture, right? Like, they, they went about things a completely different way. And that's why they grew yeah. so much. You're, you're 100% right, Chris. And I think, um, actually, the other R app, uh, starts with the letter R is Revolut, which is really an international kind of super app for international folks. Um, mm. And they have they've got you know they launched this kind of you know Revolut and sort of FX you know holding a, a bank balance in multiple currencies. But they've added I mean they're even adding crypto. They've got um, you know Revolut Business right Revolut Pro and they've even got Revolut Teen right for you, you mm-hmm. think about kind of onboarding people. So I like to think of Spritz almost like as a as a Revolut for Web three users where where you can kind of run a lot of your everyday you know needs financial needs from our app um but we're not actually going to be again you're keeping your crypto you're keeping it in your self-custody wallets and you can connect a lot of the other accounts and other bills that you've you've already got so yeah but i think you know robin hood also right very 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 similar audience um and approach Mm -hmm. yeah definitely I am with you. We got some memes being posted in in the AMA questions. Um, right, probably some good ones there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Someone, uh, how do I long spritz? <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, not not yet. Maybe we'll do a uh, you know provide a way for everybody to get a get a piece, but uh, but not yet. Awesome, awesome stuff. Um, let's dive a little bit deeper into the fees, like the fee structure that you guys have. I like to always kind of put people on the spot, hear what they got. 
um, especially with like you've already addressed the problem with on ramps. They are expensive. There are a lot of fees yep. there, and a lot of the a lot of the platforms that had low fees are shutting down right now. Um, yeah. in light of the whole yeah. FTX thing, it seemed like FTX had a big foothold in, or a lot of inv- of FTX's investors had, um the lower fees which is is interesting but mm-hmm. um now you have like coinbase with i think it's like what i think zach said it was like a three percent uh the other day he mentioned to me it's like three percent metamask that you said you're saying is like now partnered with moonpay and whoever else for their five yep. percent it's it's just ridiculous so what are the fees that spritz is looking at both now and if it's plenty you know there's any plans to change that in the long term mm-hmm yeah, exactly. I mean, first of all, fees, pricing, it's something that, you know, I feel is kind of, it's part of product and yep. it's something that should be looked at as a product feature in a way. Yeah, of course, everybody wouldn't want it to be free, right? But we want something where users are feeling like they're getting, you know, tons of value from the mm-hmm. from the product. We want to take feedback. We want to make adjustments. And as we build out these features, right, today, and I'll get to the fees, it's all kind of one fee structure across the whole platform. And, you know, that was gotcha. fine maybe three months ago when we launched, but now we've got the card coming in, we've got smart pay, mm-hmm. you know, you may see us, uh, and now we've got a lot more data too, right? Around customers and feedback. We, there might be ways for us to find, you know, maybe we remove some functionality and reduce the fees for some users who just want, hey, I want to off ramp once or twice a month with mm-hmm. one token on one chain. All right, yeah. maybe there's a basic account. Other people, it's like, I've got, you know, 20 different bills I want to pay. I've got stuff on Arbitrum. I've got stuff on Polygon. You know, and then we can kind of have a different yeah. account. So, but today it's just a transaction fee um, based on your volume, your total volume in a given month. So we kind of tally up mm. what you're doing, and it doesn't matter whether you're making 100 transactions or one transaction. You're going to get the same fee for the same amount of total volume. Um, so, firstly, the first hundred dollars, something we do differently than I think many platforms, the first hundred dollars is actually completely free uh, at Spritz. So rather than saying oh, it's a minimum of $2 or a minimum of $5. If you do $100, we're just saying, hey, well, you know, if you're a little guy just kind of trying us out, uh, or frankly, you're just a little guy, um, you know, <laughs> we can give that to you for free, right? It's not it's not a big deal. Yeah. Um, you're going to, hopefully you're going to succeed and you're going to want to do larger, larger volume in the future, or hey, maybe you're just going to tell some friends about us in the future. After mm-hmm. that, up until $1,000, it's the higher fee point. So I think it's one95 percent on the you know between a hundred and thousand right so the next nine hundred dollars um up to five thousand dollars again the monthly total it's 1.75 percent and beyond five thousand dollars it's 1.5 percent flat i believe it might be 1.45 percent but i believe it's 1.5 percent um for gotcha. everything over five thousand and um you know that's an example too where we've got people doing you know much much higher volume or who want to do higher volume you know maybe we create another tier right because we've we've kind of heard some demand there and we've seen the demand and creating mm-hmm. another tier at a lower fee point could make sense for example in the future yeah gotcha it definitely makes sense okay so you guys are sticking like like trying to stick under you know 1.5 it sounds like does that kind of go mm-hmm. to around that number less than <laughs> less than a third of what some others are charging i like it i like it yeah. um yeah. yeah i think that's really awesome stuff so why don't we why don't we dive a little bit more into now the referral structure so people know like definitely definitely worth sharing to friends both for Mm -hmm. yourselves and then also just to obviously the it's gonna sell itself just because the product Mm -hmm. is what it is you know as people start to hear about it but um you guys offer a couple incentives right so why don't we touch on those a little bit yeah sure um firstly if you just sign up you know anybody listening here if you just sign up yourself app.spritz.finance uh no referral it's all good. Um, you're still going to get $10 like of credit, not even free, but you're going to get $10 free dollars for every single bill that you add and then pay uh, on the system, right? So we really want to, you know, people are like, oh, my God, this is too good to be true. There's no way that I add my, you know, utility bill here, send Spritz some, you know, Shiba Inu token, uh, and <laughs> out the other side, this, this bill is getting paid. Well, actually, it will get paid, and you'll, you know, you'll experience that magic. So here's ten dollars to just go ahead and send off to your bill and see it work. And that, you know, if you add ten bills, it's a hundred dollars. Um, the referral, though, we're 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 quite generous, right? Because we'd rather, you know, frankly, we'd rather give our users cash than 
Twitter ads, right? Um, mm-hmm. Or or Facebook ads, and so it's a give fifty get fifty referral, and it's um, you know for for users to use. Every single user gets a referral link. It's right in the app. Um, if you give uh, if if you give somebody the link, if they sign up, they do have to pay a, a bill of at least fifty dollars to qualify. Then both you and the user will get a fifty dollar credit on the Sprint app, and then you can just uh, off ramp it straight to your bank account, and you'll have fifty bucks in your bank account if you want right away. Or you can tack it on to a credit card bill or student loan bill or uh, something else that you've got. Um, so it's a it's a fifty 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 referral. Uh, bonus that that we've had running for a while and I think there's there's really no plans to change it uh, at least for the time being gotcha gotcha good stuff yeah I think it's it's a super generous piece and you guys are very upfront about it so I think it's a it's a really cool piece like it's a really cool piece that shows where you guys are coming from and kind of the values you guys hold so I think that's a phenomenal like a phenomenal note that people should be taking on you guys you guys are true to kind of the the vision that you've put out you know and even just talking about it today you guys are really trying to help people uh transact faster save people time but not just help you know people that have the money rather help people that do and don't alike so i I think that's that's a it's a really awesome thing um let me see real quick i'm just gonna check through the questions but as far as the referral program you say that like there's no plans to end that anytime soon which is really really cool is that you said it was fifty dollars for paying a bill. Is that strictly for paying a certain type of bill, or strictly for off ramping crypto, or is it like what? What are the yeah? Rankings? No, what any are... any use of the any use of the platform, you can use that gotcha. the credits uh, towards. So um, yeah, we have people out there, you know, who are referring dozens or even dare I say hundreds of people um, who are collecting some of those rewards and you know you you see them use it to to top up their bills every month right so they're kind of generating that um, that passive income through spritz um, I would add Chris very importantly is we do have now the affiliate program mm-hmm. that's launching which is which is a little bit different because not everybody is a user of spritz or can take advantage of it you know maybe they're outside the u.s uh or something like that but they've got a u.s audience that they want to you know spread the word with mm-hmm. so it's structured a little different where i think that the, the dollar rewards are a little bit lower but you actually get some some ongoing uh residuals from uh from usage over time gotcha. right so it's like a truly a passive income stream and then it is a little lower but then it comes straight to you you know we just kind of pay you in terms of us mm-hmm. scc uh to your wallet so it's actually right on our web page our homepage, you can see a tab called Affiliate Program, or it's spritz.finance slash affiliate dash program. And you guys can can sign up there if you know somebody who's an influencer or an affiliate or content creator, big or small. You know, we, we don't care. If you have 100 engaged followers, awesome. If you got 100,000, awesome. You know, fill out the form, and, you know, maybe we can make a little video together about spritz and, and spread the word. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, that is that is really really cool. Um, I I do have a a question. So as far as sorry, I might change the topic just a little bit. So if you had anything to add on affiliate affiliate piece, no, I'm good. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. awesome. Yeah, that, and that's definitely a really cool piece that you're giving to people that aren't US based, so they they can still spread the word, which is yeah. phenomenal. Um, Gendrix was asking. So there is a KYC. Can you describe a little bit of the process? Because that's obviously a big pain point for people granted you guys are in the u.s so that's very helpful (laughs) yeah 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 you know we're not an exchange um so we don't have all of those regulations and requirements Mm -hmm. that you see where you've got to you know hold up your passport you know in front of your webcam you've got to you know put your face in a circle and then turn it left and right Right, and then it takes ten minutes, and then they say, actually, we need to do more work, and then you get an email, and it's three days. Uh, it's not. It's not that. We do need to know, you know, your real name, and we do need to know and confirm that it's a U.S. that you've got a U.S. address. Um, that that's the key requirement. So, for ninety-nine point nine percent of people, it's just text only. You're literally clicking, you know, confirm my identity. You're typing in your address. Um, it sends a code to your phone, um, and then you're approved, you know, instantly within yeah. uh, 30, 30 seconds. Um, 
and you know we are checking against some you know some like it's it's like a do not fly list uh you know for the government we just have to like scan against the name once, yeah. once, once you know i'm just being transparent once, yeah. you know 99.9 percent .9 of people no issues super fast and once we've got that you know you're done and you know we're, we're not reporting any of this to to anybody including even your own banks or bills that you're paying they're not getting you know you're they're not even knowing that there's a relationship that you have with spritz it's really just for us to comply with our own requirements that we know our customers we know who they are and if there is ever a problem you know god forbid then we we know who you are and we know your your phone number and and we're contact you Gotcha. Gotcha. So are you guys storing that KYC data and are doing anything with that information outside of just your verification? Mm -hmm. uh, Vendrix is following up with that. Yeah, no, not at all. Right. And we use um, Cognito. It's a pretty wide, uh, widely used uh, KYC platform. They were just purchased by Plaid. Um, you know, they are PCI compliant and have all of those, you know, ISO um uh, registrations and certificates. Um, so they are storing the data very, very securely, and it's never stored on Spritz's uh, servers. So yeah, if there's an issue, then we contact them and say, hey, how do we, you know, get a hold of this person? And you know, they're the ones that I think are, are, you know, have the security in mind and, and mm -hmm. do this for you know thousands of platforms. Gotcha, gotcha. Good stuff. So um, kind of <clears throat> branching from this, with everything, it seems like they're. Uh, can you repeat that one more time for personal reasons? Um, so it seems like with everything that you're kind of going through, um, the big like I, I think people after they try it out, you know, using Spritz a couple times, they be like, oh, okay, I can, you know, I can trust this. I, I sent my hundred dollars free, saw that it got there. Um, are you guys big on the whole cybersecurity piece? Because I know that's been in light of recent couple hacks you relate it to the bridge which is why i thought that it would be a point to bring up but obviously even yeah. though people don't have or you're not having custody of their funds um people are approving transactions right so is there any any thought mm -hmm. to the cybersecurity that you guys have or are you guys really adamant about making sure that everything is is really really solidly built <clears throat> yeah um i mean yes yeah, this first and foremost for us um you know on the blockchain side of things um we've tried to be I actually think we're um an innovator now of course you don't want to be an innovator when it comes to security but you want to be <laughs> someone who's looking at you know you want to yeah. be someone who's looking at you know what's best practice right today it's almost mm -hmm. like um if it was i, I don't know what, what it was five years ago or something when two-factor authentication came about right mm -hmm. and it's like who's who's going to use this and a lot of platforms took years and years to roll it out right so for example we, we allow grand very granular approvals for our smart contract we're not mm -hmm. just saying hey approve infinite spending on your wallet mm -hmm. um you know forever we're, we're giving very very granular approvals um, mm -hmm. which is you know actually a lot of engineering work for our small team but something we felt strongly about and it's something that you're seeing more and more in some of the bigger yeah. um dApps and dexes out there so you know that's really important um on the TradFi side of things, yeah, I mean, all, a lot of the, our, our data and our systems are built on AWS. It's all in a private cloud. Like, we keep the, the data and the security on that very, very seriously uh, as well. So, yeah, we've got kind of these two responsibilities. And then, like I said, instead of, you know, where possible, where we don't need to, there's no reason for us to store some of the data. If it's just through a partner, you know, for example, that's giving us access to bills, then we don't need to store the information through the bills, um, you know, about the bills, we're just kind of giving it to the partner and they're giving us a token. And then every time you're saying, hey, pay this bill, we're just giving them the token and saying, hey, mm -hmm. pay, pay Chris's bill uh, with, with this token. And that's um, that's how it works. So, yeah, super important. It's a lot of work, but uh, yeah, yeah we, we, we try to do our very best. Yeah, I, I definitely appreciate that. I've heard of some and I never like considered this until like this past month when I, I was talking to somebody that does that stuff and they were talking about like front end hacks and uh, mm. they've seen a couple what like couple of wallet drain attacks just on the front end, just essentially hooking up the, you know, what the front end is leading you to and what contract it's approving. It, it's hooking it up to a separate mm. contract, which I thought wow. was super yeah. interesting. Yeah. I, I never even considered that. Um, yep. Yeah. So that, that was just, that was, kind of baffling to me so that's why i I'm, i bring that up a little bit more now after hearing you know the the potential mm -hmm. hacks that can happen 
Yep. Um, but yeah, so uh, let's go through, see if there are any more pieces. Um, okay, awesome, awesome. No more questions just yet. Is there anything else that we haven't touched up on that you guys are like, hey, this is super big on, you know, Spritz's future, Spritz's roadmap, um, that we haven't kind of kind of talked about just yet? Yeah, you know, I hit on the major roadmap items, the card, uh, the smart pay, recurring transactions, um, and then some of the new countries. Um, we're also working on a mobile app. So, you know, I think it's about time to to have an app in the app store and, um, mm -hmm. you know, be able to, 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 to get you notifications to your phone and just, it's just a better experience. So we're yeah. working on that, but that's kind of not, uh, it's not rocket science, but I think it's a big <laughs> improvement. Um, mm -hmm. I think something you're really seeing a lot of, and going back to the very beginning with the trading platforms and the, and the variety of, of dApps and on-chain trading platforms, you know, NFT platforms, um, we are seeing interest from those platforms to integrate spritz directly, right? Where you've got your, you know, maybe previously it was, you know, yield farming, you know, your rewards from yield farming. Now it's a lot more sophisticated, right? But you've got your, your profits or your assets deposited or staked in these platforms you know we'd like to bring spritz closer and closer to to the money uh so to speak mm. right where you can one click within that dap without going to spritz and say hey i'm a spritz user i've got a credit card bill or i've just got a bank i'm going to take take off some of my profits and right now in that transaction um send it off to the bank so we really want to integrate with with these um these platforms and so if there's anyone listening or you know either first degree or second degree or, or someone who's using a platform that they would love to see spritz work nicely with um we, we're really you know in the midst of having all those conversations and choosing you know who we're going to kind of build the first uh, handful of integrations with so um yeah that, that's kind of the next phase call it in the, the second half of 2023 that uh we'd like to start pushing towards Gotcha. Gotcha. Good stuff. Our chat is just going wild as you're kind of going through this. Uh, some some really funny stuff going on. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think that, that everything that you've chatted about as far as, you know, where you are now, what you guys are doing, I love the transparency. I love the the emphasis on really trying to focus on helping first and then, you know, you guys are going to be fine. Developing this product that you're developing is phenomenal. And is going to save people a load of time. But you guys are really still, even even so, you guys are still very focused on trying to do it in a way that, you know, aligns with your values, which is just awesome to see. You don't see enough people kind of sticking true to their the culture that they built up and, you know, who they are. As I, as impo it's, it's so important. I, I just, I don't quite understand it, but it's, it, like I said, it's just, it's really good to see, like, the the genuine nature there. Um, but yeah, I don't. Yeah, of course, man. Um, if anyone does have any other questions, feel free to throw it in the uh, AMA questions chat. Yeah, Gil, go ahead. Go ahead, man. I'll, I'll wait. So the major benefit of... So he's asking what the major benefit of Spritz is over doing it on our own. So, um, I mean, I can dive yep. into that unless you want to kind of address, you know, what it is you do on the back end and how simple it is. Yeah, I think well, you're you're yeah, giving away the answer. The simplicity, right? Um, convenience, the fact that you know w what we found originally is you know why are people off ramping crypto at all, right? Why are you sending money to your bank account if if everyone's really excited about Web three? Why are we moving money back into you know? Isn't that backwards, right? But the the point is you got to move it to your bank to then do something with, right? Maybe you got to uh, have a down payment. Maybe you've got a plumber to pay. Maybe you've got a student loan that's coming out of that that bank account. So we said let's let's skip all those steps, right? Rather than um, you know unstaking, transferring, you know maybe going to a dex to liquidate, transferring to an exchange to then off ramp and wait, and then send it to your bank, and have all the fees in between, and then and also the time and effort, you know that you've got to spend hours probably uh, every week, and then of course the the f ups, right? Uh, oops, you know. Uh, I was doing this on Arbitrum, but it was actually ETH Mainnet or something like that, right? <laughs> All the mistakes. 
Yeah. So we're we're collapsing all of that into one transaction, and we're creating a relationship where when you log into Spritz, you're seeing your bills, your bank accounts, it's all right there. But we're a neutral party. We're not aligned with an exchange. We're also not centralized. So you can kind of think of us as this kind of giving your self custody wallets um, superpowers, and you know for a very very reasonable fee. So you know if you want to do it yourself. You can roll your own, and you know a lot of people do. Um, but if you want this convenience and and all of that, uh, Spritz is a, a very very useful uh, product. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I definitely can attest to that. I, I mean, people can already do it on their own; it's very possible. But it takes time to send money from your MetaMask to your Coinbase, having to deal with every time trying to you know send a test transaction, make sure that the you know things are are going smoothly, and then you got to wait your you know, 10 minutes to send your next transaction and so forth. So, and then from there, you got to, you know, offer them to your bank account. So I, I can definitely see the the potential there, especially with all the new rollouts you guys have around for, around the kind of paying in any, any token, I believe it is. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah. Yes. Any, our, our, our goal ultimately is any token, any network, any bill, mm -hmm. right? So whatever you got, you can, Pay whatever you've got, right? So we're we're we we've got six networks today, and and we do support virtually any token on those networks. It does have to be a fair a, a liquid token in some ways, right? We're we're managing our own risk, and we're not mm. making completely illiquid tokens. But if it's if it's trading, then uh, then we'll accept the token. Gotcha. Is there any kind of? I know you said you're on six chains right now. Is there any barrier to expanding to new chains? Like, do you have to get in contact with them, or, or is it just on your end trying to develop the contracts for that? Yeah, it's just a technical lift, and then of course security, right? So you want to mm -hmm. make sure that when you're launching on a new network, you're understanding the the idiosyncrasies of that of that network and the complexities, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we, we're in talks with the the folks at Cardano. You know, to launch on Cardano, but there's some really, you know, interesting aspects to that network. And so, you know, we are looking for help sometimes to make sure we do it in a secure way. And I think, frankly, also to make sure we're launching where we've got a relationship in a community that we don't already have, right? So if we just built Cardano and just kind of put it out there, that's a little different than having, you know, the foundation actually yeah. um, work with us. So, yeah, that's, that's, we are. And then I would say, um, our next, we've done these kind of six EVM chain, you know, EVM compatible chains: um, Arbitrum, Optimism, Avalanche, ETH Mainnet, Polygon, BSC. Already, now we want to actually kind of go back to basics and do some of the layer ones like Bitcoin, you know, Dash, Litecoin. We've got a lot of people that in those communities that really want to yeah. use us but we don't we don't support bitcoin so um you know i think that needs to change and so in the next couple of months uh, at most then we're going to build support for those uh, as well before gotcha. we get into the the fancier you know zk you know stark or whatever um some of those networks yeah gotcha camp said his money laundering scheme is going to thrive now <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, so Gil, I think I think there's a, a piece that's being miscommunicated. So they're not like they are not selling on on a token investment or token, you know, token sale right now. Like they are at a point where they're just just kind of pitching the project. So or pitching the product, I should say. So it's a tool that you can use to offer in for your crypto from your MetaMask to your bank account to pay your bills. They're never in custody of your or don't ever hold your assets in the, on their end. Um it's completely from straight from your MetaMask to pay a bill directly or, you know, off ramp to your bank account. Yep. That's right. Maybe we'll be back yeah, uh, someday with it, with the token, but that's, uh, that's in the future. Yeah. Yeah. No, no worries, man. No worries. I, I figured there was something missed cause I, I could tell just based on the last question. So uh, something a little bit different. It's not, not a crypto project as much as it is a business with a product. So, but super, super awesome stuff. Man, I really appreciate you, Chris, for coming on. I know we're right at the hour mark. I don't want to keep you too long. But seriously, I appreciate you for coming on. And I'm sure we'll bring you back on for Twitter space or that kind of thing in the future. It's it's really, really great to chat. And hopefully you have fun. And you said Denver, right? Yeah, yeah. We're, uh, we're at East Denver um, this week. Having a good time. Mm -hmm. It was a blizzard earlier today. But now it's uh, <laughs> a little better. Um, 
And but yeah, Chris, you know, uh, appreciate you guys too, and everybody at Cardinal House, and you know, shout out to Austin Cart too, uh, who's who's uh, been a friend of Spritz and a, and a big user of ours for a while. I think he was listening in for a bit. And um, yeah, Chris, really appreciate the chat, and thanks for the good questions, everybody. Check us yeah. out. Awesome, awesome. Looking forward to chatting again. Have a good one, guys.